Hey class, and welcome to the Intervals and Bar Graph tutorial. Let's take a look at the problem first. Here are the test scores of Mr. Make Believes class. Create a bar graph to display the data so he can get an idea of how the class did. So why do we need to use intervals sometimes? Sometimes the amount or range of data is too great and we need to use intervals to show the data properly. In this case, it's too great. Look how many numbers that I have to plot in. I don't want to make 20 because there's 20 marks here. I don't want to make 20 different bars in my bar graph. That's a really big long graph. So I'm going to try to cut it down and try to use only four, five, or six bars if I can. In order to do that though, I have to use intervals. So step one, we're going to find the range. To find the range, grab the highest number, which is 98 in this case. Subtract from it the lowest number, which is 50, so the lowest value. That gives you 48. Step two, I'm going to divide it by a number four, five, or six. Because if I divide it by four, five, or six, and I use those intervals, it's gonna give me four, five, or six bars. So 48, I'm gonna choose five, because 48 is really close to 50. The answer is actually 9.6, I did it on a calculator. And 9.6 is really close to 10. And this is a great number because I can count by tens really easily. So I'm going to try to start my intervals with rounded numbers. So for example, 10, 30, 40, something ends with zero under the lowest piece of data. Lowest piece of data. Let's go back. The lowest piece of data is 50. I'm going to start with a rounded number. Oh, but wait, it already is 50. It's a nice round number. But say it was 51, I would have probably started at 50 anyways just to make it easier to count by. So here it is. I write 50. And now I have to count 10 marks using intervals of 10. So 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, and 59. You might have thought it would have been up to 60, but I have to count 50 as a mark as well. So 50 to 59 is actually 10 marks. Next, I go to the next one, and I start at the next mark up. 60, it's not 59. The next mark up is actually 60. We can't use 59 twice. 60. 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 67, 68, 69. That's another 10 marks. Now you can probably see I go 70, then to 79, 80 to 89, 90 to 99, and I can stop at 99 because I look, no mark is higher than 99. Okay? Now I just have to go in and figure out how many marks are in between 50 to 59. And in this case, it's 1, 2. And so I count 2. I already counted the rest up just to save some time. You can check to see if I'm right, but I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. And there are two marks in the 90s. I just looked at my data in here. So now I have to actually do the last part, which is make the graph. I already saved time by including the title and the headings, the labels, sorry. And I put my y-axis intervals up here, scale up here. So now I just fill it in. Uh, I have to fill it in by labeling what my intervals are going to be. So I just copy this in from here. The first bar is going to be from 50 to 59. The second bar is going to be 60, we said, to 69, right? Third bar, 70 to 79. Fourth bar, 80 to 89. And the last bar is 90 to 99. And I just take that information now and I make a bar graph out of it. So 50 to 59, how many students? There's two. You would use a ruler. I don't have a ruler on the tablet. 60 to 69, there are three. And 70 to 79, there are four. And 80 to 89, there's nine. And 90 to 99, there's two. Two's right here. And so there you go. I have a bar graph with intervals made, and this really helps me now. Why? Because actually I can take a look now and get an idea of how the class did. And it looks like the highest bar here is for the 80 to 89 score, which is a pretty good mark. So I'm feeling like the class did very well. Say the example, for example, my bar graph, my highest bar was here in the 50 to 59 area, that's probably making me think Mr. Make Believe has to go back and maybe try to reteach something because the class didn't do well. And there you go, bar graphs.